Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. Thanks for checking out another video of mine here on YouTube. Today, we are going over Resolve. This video is gonna be a very, very basic intro to Resolve. And the point of it is kind of, if you're a little bit scared of Resolve and you're a little bit intimidated about the interface and maybe some of the features in the app, this will give you some basic ground level knowledge and get you comfortable enough to open up Resolve and start playing around. So if you're familiar with Resolve, this probably isn't the video for you. Okay, just move on. But if you've been kind of eyeing Resolve from a distance, this might just be, uh, this might be the one. So let's take a look at the basic layout of Resolve. I'm here in the edit page, which is the first page that pops up. But even before this, you'll see a window called your project manager. This is where you open projects you've been working on. You can make a new project. You can kind of organize all of your projects. All of that goes on right here. So let's make a new project. I'm gonna call this Resolve Intro and hit Enter to hit Create. So once you have a project to open, Resolve should look something like this. And before we get into too many details, I wanna show you right down here. There's six buttons, Media, Edit, Fusion, Color, Fairlight, and Deliver. Each of these, when you click them, switches the Resolve interface to something different. And this is the first major difference of Resolve, where there are a lot of apps that do one thing and then you might go into a different app to do something else. Resolve has several apps kind of built into one. And each thing that you would normally do in a separate app is organized into a page of Resolve. So like I said, the first thing that comes up is the edit page. You can pretty much think of this as your editing program. This is like using Premiere or Final Cut or Vegas or any kind of non-linear editor, this is where all of that is gonna happen. So let's import some media. I can do this a bunch of different ways, but the easiest thing to do is grab my Explore window here, select a bunch of media, and drag it over into this window right here, which is called the Media Pool. I'm gonna let go, and everything is gonna show up right there. All of this media that I just dragged into here is imported into my project. That means that I can use these inside of timelines, inside of any of the pages of Resolve. And this media pool window, it's not only in the edit page, but also in the media, fusion, color, and fairlight pages. And you can use media throughout the entire app. If I were to go down here to my color page, I can go up to the left and I can open up my media pool there. Same with my fairlight page, I can go up to my media pool and open up my media there. But for now, let's stick to the edit page. What I'm gonna do is just drag one of my clips down into my timeline, and what that's gonna do is make a new timeline for me. See up here in the media pool, I have a new thumbnail here that says timeline one. That's the timeline that I just created down here. Now, if you're familiar with video editing at all, if you've ever used an app like Premiere or Final Cut, this page is gonna make a lot of sense. This is the place where you assemble clips into timelines, you cut them, you trim them, you move them around in time. So what I'll do is just build a little sequence here. I'm gonna grab one clip, I can double click, load this into my source viewer, I can set ins and outs, and I can drag my clips around in the timeline. But the very basics are pretty much the same as any non-linear editor. I can also go up here to the left where it says effects library. That'll open a window down here, and I can add effects like blurs, to any clip that I have in the timeline, and I can change the properties of any of my clips and any of my effects using this inspector panel up to the right. This is things like transform, cropping, and all of the properties of a clip, as well as my properties of my effects, like for instance, this blur. So that's pretty much the core of building a project inside of Resolve. It's all within the edit page. That's where you bring in clips, that's where you move them around, it's just like any editor. Now, I know where things get scary, is the other pages. So let's take a really quick look at what happens in the other pages and why you would use them. So right now we have the edit page selected. If I go back one to the media page, this is where you can do some advanced media management. You can preview clips, you can browse clips that are on your system, and you can edit any of the metadata for media that's in your project. This whole page is something that you probably won't get super deep into until you get pretty familiar with Resolve. So for now, we'll go back to the edit page, and to the right of the edit page is the fusion page. Now, you may be looking at this and go, oh my goodness, what is even happening here? Because the interface looks so different and so much more scary than, say, an interface that looks like an editor. And the reason it looks different is because Fusion is different. It's actually an entire app crammed inside of one page of Resolve. And Fusion's main job is graphics and compositing. 
Fusion is also one of those pages that you're probably not going to get super deep into right off the bat because it does have a steeper learning curve and honestly, you don't use it as often as the other features inside of Resolve. But to take away some of the scariness, if you look up in the top left, you'll see we have our media pool and our effects library. If we look over to the right, we still have our inspector. And these are the exact same panels that you'll find within the edit page. But by far the biggest scariest part of the fusion page is the node graph. Anytime that you can posit something, you're essentially putting something over something else. And so we're really used to using layers. Everybody's used layers inside of Photoshop or even a nonlinear editor, but compositing inside of the fusion page is done with nodes and nodes aren't really layers. It's more like a set of instructions or like a recipe. We're going to do more basic videos on this in the future, but for now we have one node that says import the media. We have another node that says export the media and in between are instructions for what we want to do. So let's say we want to blur this image. I can click this little button right here that says blur and that's going to add an instruction to blur the image in between import and export. So if I select this blur node, that's an instruction that's telling Fusion to blur this image, but we have to tell it how much. So if we come up here to the right in our inspector, we can adjust the properties of this node just like we adjust the properties of clips in the edit tab. And I can just crank up my blur and that's going to blur my image more. There's a lot of things to talk about in the Fusion page and we're going to talk about it more. I also have some other videos exploring some of the basics of the Fusion page, but for now you got to remember this. The Fusion page is for compositing and graphics and all of that is built with nodes, which aren't really like layers. They're like instructions on what to do. So you might import an image, then you might blur it. Then you might put text over the image and then render it out. It's like building a recipe or a set of instructions for what you're making. Okay, let's have a look at the color page. This is where all of the clips from our edit timeline are going to be brought over so that we can do some advanced color correction. This is another one of those parts of Resolve that seems really scary because it's a different interface and it can be intimidating, but here's what you need to know to kind of get your feet wet. Here in the middle of our screen, we have clips. Every time there's a cut in our edit timeline, it makes a different clip here and we can click on it to select the clip and bring it up in our viewer. Whatever clip is in our viewer, we can adjust with the color palettes down here. And really, this is just a whole bunch of color tools that you can use to adjust your image. So if you're familiar with curves, you can use curves. We also have color wheels that'll let you adjust the color cast as well as the brightness of different parts of the image. Again, there's a ton of things that we could dive into on this page, but for now, think of it as a dedicated workspace where you can select different clips from your timeline and adjust the color with a variety of tools. The next page over is called Fairlight. This page in Resolve used to be a complete audio app. So you have all the power of a digital audio workstation all just crammed into one part of Resolve. And for anybody who's familiar with audio, this will make a lot of sense. You can drag audio to your timeline, cut clips, trim them, move them around, just like you'd expect to inside of Pro Tools or Adobe Audition. It's a very, very powerful audio app. And the coolest thing is that this isn't just an audio app that you can grab audio and import and mess with. It actually takes your timeline from your edit page and brings it over into this dedicated audio workspace so you can do some detailed mixing and audio sweetening all without having to round trip to another application. Check this out. If I were to go over to my edit page, I can see that the audio that I added in Fairlight is in my edit timeline. So I can kind of bounce back and forth between moving things around in the edit page and then just switching over to Fairlight and doing some detailed mixing. This kind of works the same way with the edit page and the color page. I can, let's say, make two different clips in my edit page. And when I move into color, I have two clips here in color. Let's say I want to make one cold. I can switch back over to my edit page and here I have my clip graded cold inside of my edit page. This is a really flexible way to work because you can make an adjustment in one page and it will update in the other pages. And so it's all these different tools that are working on the same project. The last page that we have is the deliver page. And this is where you can set all of your render settings and manage presets and everything that you need to actually render out your video. Not only that, but you can select different presets 
and add them to a queue where you can render multiple different versions at once. I always say this page works a lot like uh, Apple Compressor or Adobe Media Encoder. It's a really slick way to be able to take one or multiple timelines and make a ton of different deliverables and just queue them all up to render at once. So Resolve is broken into six different pages and each of these pages has a different specialty. But here's the really cool thing. If you don't really want to get super deep into color or super deep into compositing, you don't feel like jumping into the color page or the fusion page, you don't really care that much about doing detailed audio mixing in the Fairlight page, you can just use the edit page. And just within that section of Resolve, you'll get quite a bit of functionality that isn't really that scary and is very, very similar to an NLE. The difference with Resolve is the power that each of these pages brings. You could do your entire project inside of the edit page and you could do some basic adjustments to the image and add titles and do some work on your audio. And there's nothing wrong with doing it that way, but there are a ton of tools inside of Resolve that really make it a very, very powerful post-production app. So I hope this was a good intro for you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like. And for more post-production tutorials, videos on DaVinci Resolve and color grading and editing, make sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. My name again is Casey Ferris. I will catch you next time.